I have loved the music of Raymond Scott ever since I was a child. And in fact, I've put a number of his pieces on Quartet San Francisco albums over the years. But when this sketch came to me of an unrecorded piece that he had written with his granddaughter, Kathy, we realized that Cutie and the Dragon had to be a part of this new recording project. My mom and I were visiting him in California and I think he did what he always does, which he wanted to teach and coach me and play this, play it this way, whatever. And I think the writing came later. And I have this very excited email from my mom in 2018 when she was out at Scott Works, I guess, saying, do you still have that piece of music? Because somebody here wants to see it. Jeremy's first uh, comment to me was, here there's a song that he wrote that hasn't been recorded. Would you want to arrange it? My interpretation of what I saw was not honestly a song, but that's when I, you know, reached out, you know, to the family, said I, respectfully, this is a, not a song, it's it's the potential for a song. Well, I appreciate the privilege if you would allow me to finish it. Jeremy came to me with this idea and basically like, well, I just trust him so much. It was like, whatever you want to do, I know it's going to be great. There were just so many places to go, the more rope I could give Gordon to do be it stay in his happy place, the the more amazing the record would be. I remember I wrote an introduction before the, the main melody. I wrote a little introduction and I wrote a bridge. So it just builds and builds all this material that's all derivative of what I saw in that lead sheet. You feel the production, the, the sort of the magnificence of the production, but you feel a sort of elevated state with the whole thing. And for Cutie, I mean, that's far more than arranging. That, that was really creating from the idea. As he wrote at the top of the page, an idea, Cutie and the Dragon. It's brought into the present with all of you, you know, playing with him. It's a time machine moment. I mean, the, you know, but I think if I could go back in time and watch the, you know, the quintet rehearsing and putting it together and be a part of that. Uh, and I got a chance to do that. It's often said, oh, he was ahead of his time. And how wonderful is it that almost 30 years after his passing, that time is catching up with him. He was ahead of his time because we're still chasing him. The man's music was timeless. It doesn't date. The joy in it more than anything else, that's what comes through to me and I love that. If it can nurture the legacy of Raymond Scott and his music so that people listen to this record and go, well, let me go back and check out his other stuff. That is the real value. And even Jeremy, when you were talking about all the, the recording and creating the video, but and, and Gordon as well, putting all that together. He was so into recording and all that technology. I mean, the whole thing. Maybe he was here like watching it all because he would have been, he would have loved all of it, every, every piece of it. So thank you guys so much.